Thank you, Elano. So I think he has done a really wonderful job of telling, sharing with us how you could use, how simple Vue.js is and how you could use it to get started really quickly. But Vue.js is not just that, the, the Vue.js is used in production as well. So in my company, I am Shiling, uh, by the way, so I'm a full stack developer for about three years and I've co-founded Uralicious. Uh, Uralicious is a tool for testing web applications and I could do a quick demo to show you how Vue.js is used in production. But in any case, we are not the only ones who are using Vue.js in production. GitLab, for example, is also using Vue.js in production and you should totally read this article and watch the video to find out uh, why they chose Vue.js as well. So there are many reasons why uh, I would consider to use Vue.js uh, in large projects. So first of all, I need to make sure that is it easy to learn? First of all, I, I used to work in another company and we use AngularJS. And I was, sadly to say, I was the sole programmer of that project. And when I left the company and had to transfer it over, because I was using AngularJS, it was a huge, huge pain to transfer it to another ju junior and teach him all about Angular again. And one thing uh, I was looking for uh, was I was researching what frameworks to use. I took a look into ReactJS. And I kind of got the same feeling as I got when I saw React J uh, Angular JS. So it's like, oh, I'm going to teach my juniors how to use React JS. So I got introduced to um, uh, Vue JS through another freelancing project that I was working on. That was based in PHP. So Vue JS is really, really popular in PHP. And when I started, I started using Vue JS in very, very small components, which is when I realized that. Hey, it's really simple as uh, Lionel showed you, it is so very simple. So on a, on a, other things are, is the code maintainable and is it fast? And that kind of things we can explore later on. So as I mentioned, uh, and, and you can see Vue.js is really, really powerful. And it can be used, it is as powerful as React.js itself for large applications. So in larger applications, you want to have um, Things like state management, so we have Vuex to who can, which can do that. We also want to have uh, routing available for very powerful single page applications. So Vue.js has its own version called uh, Vue, Vue routing, Vue router. Yeah, so it's a, everything you need to build a modern web application is already in Vue.js. But while it's very powerful, it, it, oh, it is also very fast. So com, uh, compared to React.js uh, itself is on par. So you don't get the negative penalties uh, in older frameworks like AngularJS, where if you render lots and lots of lists, the virtual, virtual DOM starts uh, start getting a little bit slow. slow. So Vue.js is really fast at uh, all this data binding stuff. That's why they can render huge data sets. Uh, it's as fast as React.js. And although it's really, really powerful and you have uh, everything in the kitchen sink, it's also really lean. So you can start really small. As Lionel showed you, he didn't have to plug in everything in the kitchen sink. You didn't have to learn how to, how to use Vuex. You didn't have to learn how to use a Vue router. You can just get started already. So you only need to install the plugins as you need it. And when I was working on UIlicious as a pro prototype to get, begin with, I, it was as simple as what Lionel showed. And, and as the project got more and more complicated and I started to realize the need of putting in view routing, then I put in view routing. As, um, as it got harder and harder to transfer data between parent to child components, from child to parent components, from sibling to sibling components, and it was getting hard passing data around, then that's when I thought, hey, I need uh, state management. Then I plug in Vuex. So it's really, really lean and it's progressive. So Codeship also says the same thing. So uh, recently Codeship wrote this uh, blog. Uh, it was back in June. And they say like, what's great about uh, Vue.js is that it can grow into something more when you need it. And one great thing about Vue.js is it plays nice with third party libraries. 
So when I need to plug in Tether to do my tooltips, when I need to plug in jQuery for some reason, or when I need to plug in maybe uh, Bootstrap like or uh, some date picker module, it plays nice with uh, the third party libraries. You don't have to make it, you don't need to do another adapter. Like uh, I, I think in Angular back then, so I, I haven't actually used React myself, so I, I, I would cite a lot of <laughs> Angular examples. So back then, if I wanted to use uh, bootstrap select for to do a very nice select drop down for angular I actually need to find the adapter library for it and plug it in and sometimes they don't maintain this uh, third-party adapter library so it's pretty uh, pretty painful they don't get uh, updates and they don't fix boxes so you're dependent on people who maintain the third-party adapter libraries so this one nice thing about Vue.js it plays nice and I think one thing that I really scared me about uh, React.js is uh, JSX. I couldn't uh, accept the thought of putting HTML into JavaScript. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so as I mentioned, Vue.js has a really easy link up. That's why I chose it for production. So one thing to consider about a large project is that can we keep the code maintainable? So if you work on a really, really large project, and I've been working on web projects for quite a number of years. Uh, before AngularJS, it was, um, it was uh, jQuery, and we end up with spaghetti code. It was horrible. So uh, one of the inspirations for uh, how so so uh, that, what, what this translates to like is a code maintainer, which is another way of saying how can we not end up with spaghetti code? Yeah. So one of the inspirations I uh, I thought about when I was doing a little bit of video game programming alongside is that video games have really really complex user interfaces, and how do they how do the video gamers keep it sane? So I did a little bit of uh, Unity programming at the, at, at the site, and I realized that video gamer, video game programmers are really smart. They every single uh, object is in charge, so that's why we have uh, the Polymer project days. Uh, advocated by Google. But web components have its own set of problems. So the problem with web components <coughs> is that um, they are still they still require a lot of polyfills for to support other browsers as well as older versions of IE. And these polyfills actually uh, have some uh, add on to the have an impact on the performance of the web components itself. And there's a lot of things that I found was missing in web components or was difficult about web components that I decided not to go with it. But web components form the inspiration for Vue.js and they, and what Vue.js does better than web components is that it does, it does, there's no polyfill that is needed and it's performing very fast on each of every one of the browsers as well. Okay, so how do we keep uh, code sane? So I mentioned that every component should should take care of its own style. It should take care of its own leg uh, logic. So we instead of having lots of .html files uh, and one monolith JavaScript file and one monolith CSS or uh, SCSS file, we every component has its own .view file. So in this .view file that I just uh, copied from one of the documentation site. Uh, on top, it says it is the template. So the template is uh, based, it is written in Jade, Jade here, but it can just be as simple as your HTML itself. So that's your HTML template and the script which controls the logic of the uh, the view component itself. And right below the script uh, is the style. So everything is encapsulated in one file. So imagine if you have hundreds of hundreds of components, it's much more sane to find all these 
all the code within its own file rather than to dig it up in some giant 10,000 lines of code. But the problem with uh, dot .view is that the browsers don't know what is dot .view. So what you end up needing to do is to use a build system like Webpack and Browserify. So that's one of the ugly parts of uh, Vue.js. Everyone, when I talk about Vue.js, everyone just, ugh. <laughs> yeah. Like even, I, I can't do enough, uh, I can't do a, I, I thought about doing a talk on Webpack, but I don't think it's just gonna do a disservice to all of you and disservice to Webpack itself. <laughs> So I decided that, well, well if you want to learn how to do, web, do Webpack for, configure Webpack for Vue by hand, you can go to this really, really good guide on Webpack for Vue. <laughs> but if you want to make it, um, if you want to be lazy, uh, Vue has a really good uh, tool that allows you to bootstrap your, your application very quickly. So you could just grab uh, Vue CLI, and if you want to do really, really simple prototyping, you could just do view init simple my project. But if you want to do, uh, you want to bootstrap your application for Webpack, you could just do view init Webpack my project. So in uh, the production uh, templates, they do all sorts, do all the production uh, uh, builds uh, pipelines for you, so such as uh, hot reloading, linting, testing, and CSS extraction, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's really good to uh, it, it's really good to just use Vue CLI to get started. So as for us in UIlicious, uh, our front end stack is quite simple. Um, it's just uh, it's a simple page application, and we use Vue.js uh, 2.2, Vue Vue X, and Vue Router. We also use ES6 and Babel, and we and Bootstrap 4. And we only use jQuery because Bootstrap needs jQuery. If it weren't for Bootstrap, I wouldn't be using jQuery because Vue.js does a really good job of doing everything that jQuery could do. And we also use uh, Webpack, uh, but I'm not going to go too much into uh, Webpack because it's really complicated and I'm not going to do any one uh, service. All right, so that's basically it. So um, the, um, before I do maybe a quick demo of uh, just to show you what the available tools you can use for Vue.js, perhaps is there any questions you guys have on uh, how do you use Vue for large projects? Oh? Unit, unit testing. So unfortunately, we don't. Uh, I don't unit test the Vue.js component itself. I know React has a library for that called Enzyme. The funny thing is, we build our own <laughs> testing library. That's why we don't use a unit testing library. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I'd like to actually mention something about the third-party plugins. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I've been playing around with uh, this uh, leaflet GIS. It's a sort of a GIS plugin where you can uh, display maps and things on the map. <laughs> so actually, talking about class, right, the problem I'm running into is that uh, I'm not sure whether it's because of my code or because I'm not doing something correctly. Compared to vanilla JS and compared to the Vue and JS app, the Vue JS with the leaflet plugin is uh, the performance is much much slower and it's quite obvious. So it is a mapping uh, a map library. It's a yeah, it's a mapping library. It's a uh, it's a visualization thing like yeah, JS and I think you like D3JS. So I think the thing I noticed is it's quite common among all the modern frameworks. So this is not a problem that is limited to Vue.js. I heard a lot of uh, uh, issues with trying to integrate the D3 and uh, React.js as well. So it seems like the problem is coming from each of these library having their own methods of handling the DOM rendering that is on top of the framework's own DOM rendering uh, methods. So because of these two, there are some uh, inefficiencies. So that is, I think, one of the unfortunate things. I don't really know that it has a solution for it. What I heard from the guy who did the, um, the D3 and the React.js hack was that he removed all of D3's uh, DOM rendering code. So, 
yeah, it seems like a, a huge hack. So I this is one of the limitations. So if you have a library that does a lot of uh, visualization and it and because of this visualization, they need to do their DOM rendering on their own, then it might uh, run into trouble with uh, Vue.js and React.js because they have their own separate set of Vue, uh, DOM rendering processes and it's going to come into conflict and it might just cause your application to be slower. Mm. Uh, one question. Yeah. So, uh, what about the asynchronous data? So, suppose you have some data which is coming from the Ajax API. Uh, so, how to test that much? How do you, how do you test asynchronous data? Okay. Sorry, I'm not quite sure what do you mean. So, how do you test that uh, component with the asynchronous data here? Oh, so, so this is similar to unit testing. So this one, I unfortunately, I don't have a lot of uh, knowledge on that. So I, I, why don't you leave that question on the meetup group? I'll do a little bit of research and come back to you about that. Have you looked into code splitting and chunking? Yeah, definitely. It's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's a nightmare. <laughs> But it's done, I've done it, so uh, I, I could share with you like uh, the configuration I have, yeah. Okay, so uh, maybe I could show you a little bit of um, some of the magic tricks that we have for Vue.js. I think one of the things that I really like about Vue is the Vue Developer tool. So this is available as a Chrome extension. So this is uh, Ulicious, and we, we just basically, it's an IDE for, for you to write user interface tests. So I'm going to just uh, run one of these tests here, and you can see that you can inspect the, uh, in, so you have to open your, your uh, Chrome developer tools first, and you can, there you see here, if you, it's installed and your website has a view, is running view, the view tab will be open. And there's a few tabs here, components, view X, events, and you can refresh it. So you could inspect the components inside the uh, inside your app. So we have a root here, we have a global event hub, we can look at the studio, there's a model container which when you click on this opens a model. So it's really nice that you can inspect all of these and to debug them. And as I'm clicking each of these, you can see what is the um, the data that is bound to each of these fields. And you can see that in each of these components, they take care of their own routes as well. So that's why we could do things like, we could just swap between editor and settings and back to editor. And it just, it, uh, the, the app navigation bar itself, it does not swap out at all. What is swapping out is just the, the view itself is because of the view router. So it's just swapping this, this stuff out. I think let me open more of this so you can see that is uh, so you can see that the editor is just swapping out with the settings page. So this is just controlled by view router itself, and it's very nice that the debugger tool helps you to see all of these things. So yeah, so not not only can you just see can you see the data object itself, you can see what are the computer objects itself. So in the script pane, we can see that. Um, is loading a, re a preview pane here, and there's lots and lots of uh, computer variables that uh, is really hard for me to explain right now because it's uh, complicated as well. <laughs> it's related to our application, so I won't go too deep into that, but I think this is something is really powerful too. And besides that, you can look into the Vuex state. So we have uh, lots of different kinds of states inside here. We have uh, um, the project state, so in the, in in the, um, if you go back out one layer, you can see like there's lots and lots of projects that can be created for the projects uh, for in UIVicious. And then you can see in, in each project, uh, you can inspect what is the, what's the collection of projects in our application. And you can inspect for this project with ID1, what is this property, et cetera, et cetera. So there's lots of, uh, it's, it's really, really powerful. So I, this is one of the things that I really like about Vue is that not only is it easy to teach my programmers how to use it, it's easy for, to teach them how to debug Vue as well. Yeah. So that's all. <laughs> if you have any questions. Yes? What about validation? Sorry, could you say that again? Validation. 
Form validation. Ah, form validation. Okay, so that's one of the things that I did manually. So we don't have some magic trick. If I remember, um, <coughs> for example, Angular, they used to have something called ng required and um, a lot of uh, directives that help you to do form validation itself. But these don't come uh, built into Vue itself. So I had to build my own methods for doing form validation. And if these methods occur often enough, I will convert it into directives. So form validation is something that is not built into Vue.js itself. Yeah. Okay, so I guess uh, that's all we have. <laughs> Thank you.